Stewart Title. Online at Stewart.com. That's S T E W A R T.com. And welcome back. Real Estate Matters with Stewart Title. And now, a legendary realtor, my neighbor, my friend. He is here. His name is Weldon Rigby, and that is so easy to remember. He is with Keller Williams Metropolitan. Weldon, thank you, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Bill. And it's about time you, you're on the show here. I see you all the time, and now you're here to talk real estate and tell. And kind of, we'll, we'll even reminisce a little bit about how Houston has changed. But tell people about your company and and how long you've been in real estate. This is my 46th year in real estate in the Galleria area. Of course, it was before the Galleria. I mean, that was just dirt at that time, right? Yes, exactly. Vegetable farms. Anyway, I got in the real estate business in June of 1970, went to work for a small company. There was very little training in those days. You got your license and you own your own. Believe it or not, I had telephone reluctance, so I wouldn't call people. I took up knocking on doors, and I knocked on every door in Afton Oaks every month for a year, and it paid off. I sold 50 houses in there doing that. See that, and that's some really basic training that you learn, and even that psychology today, I think, serves you well, right? Well, now I can poke any bear and talk to them on the phone, there you, there <laughs> or in person. <laughs> well, and I'll mention that as I said, you are my neighbor, and I know that you enjoy. We we live in a great area in the Uptown Post Oak area, and the cool thing about it is we're out there exercising, but you're out there work walking through the neighborhood, meeting people, and people know about you all these many years, right? Yes. I know everyone in my farm, walk it pretty much every day, and uh, the business has been very good to me. In fact, now that I've been doing this so long, I have people ask me, Weldon, when are you going to retire? I tell them I would have to get a job. This is not a job for me. I love what I do. That's right. And in fact, I just saw, a, I forget the street, Tangle Lane, I think it is, but boy, we ju you just had another home sell, and that is always great to see your signs out there in the neighborhood so everyone knows who you are. And, and that's right. You're out there. You're an ambassador, quite frankly, for our neighborhood. It's a pleasure to be in this business. It's been very rewarding for me. There's so many things that have changed. I could, it could, I could take all day and not tell you, but when I got in it on Friday mornings, I'd drive down to HAR, go to the drive-in window. Now, this is in the 70s. We're, 70s. Going, we're, we're turning the time back, going yep. to the 70s. Here we go. I go pick up my loose-leaf sheets, take a half a day to put my MLS book together, Four years later, we finally began to have a bound book. Three or four years after that, we had a bound book with photographs. Then we got a Realtronics machine. You'd dial the phone, and I do mean dial, and stick the phone on the rubber earpieces, and it would chug out some listings that you were looking for. Finally got lot boxes. When I started, we had a one-page contract. There were no seller's disclosures. There were no addendums. There were no inspections. Oh, my goodness. That's scary. And so finally, it was a real pleasure, Bill. Finally, in 1976, an old fellow by the name of Mr. Modell in the Heights began to do termite inspections. Then Ed Averdick over on Bissonette, who was an engineer, began to do structural inspections. As you know today, our one-page contract has become a 10-page contract plus 12 pages of addenda. It's the same thing with the listings. We went from one-page listing to 12-page listings. I used to spend the morning picking up my keys to show property because there were no lot boxes and go show the properties. Had a pocket full of dimes, so if I saw something extra, I'd stop pay at a payphone, <laughs> use that. And in the afternoon, I'd return the keys. You delivered everything. We had no faxes, no scans, no computers to speak of. It was a real hands on personal business. Well, that's interesting because <clears throat> when we think about the 70s, 2016, that quite frankly is a long time ago. Now, I was around in the 70s. I was not in Houston at the time, but I think it's fascinating. I have seen the changes even since I got here in Houston in 82, and I've kept an eye on real estate, but it is fascinating. Let, let's talk about, th there's some of the things that w you were doing as a realtor back then, and it is totally different, bigger contract now, contracts now, but a lot of technology. Tell us a little bit about from then till now, the things that have remained the same as far as being successful for realtors out there in the real estate profession. What's stayed the same? Anything? You can have all the backups in the world, computers, contracts, uh, whatever, and it's still a personal service business. And because of that, I have 5,000 people in my database. 
In some instances, I'm working with the fourth generation in a family. I called them on their birthday to get a personal birthday card with a picture I took on it from Maine or wherever. It's just a personal personal business. I believe in, in follow-up after the sale, have a team that backs me up. I couldn't begin to do what I do if I didn't have my personal listing and sales manager. I have my own bookkeeper. I have my own office. I'm a company S-Corp within Keller Williams. We have 650 agents in the office. I have a team of me. I'm the front counter man and two ladies that back me up. Because of that, I'm typically, well, many times I'm number one out of the 650, not in number of units because I, I do mainly I end, but in dollar volume. I like dollar volume. All right, let, let's, <laughs> and who doesn't, uh, the whole idea, and, and it said, well, I'd rather sell the $1 million or the $5 million property than, than 20 other properties. But in the meantime, I'm going to go back to this well, and there is no doubt about it. Technology has changed, all the gadgets, all the things that we have to charge, but but it does go back to, and I'm also picturing our neighborhood again, and it could be any neighborhood, but I'm picturing you have to have that eye-to-eye contact, that handshake, that connecting with people of all sorts, that is still paramount and so important, right? Absolutely. If you meet them initially and first impressions are lasting, I have one client, for example, from Dubai that I sold a very large home to in Tanglewood, and then we leased it for her. Well, she did very well on it, so I've sold her three others. She's never seen them. I send her the, I email her the pictures, email her the contracts. She sends me the money, and we lease them out for her. Trust becomes so important. I want to go back, too, to the, what you were saying. When you talk about Keller Williams, there's a lot of Keller Williams here in the Houston area and beyond. But Keller Williams Metropolitan, that's right. You do have a ton of agents there, a lot of them there. And to say the fact that you've had the highest dollar volume on a consistent basis, that that is gigantic. Give us a word. I know a lot of realtors, there's a lot of new realtors out there, but give them a couple pointers, if you would, of just basic core principles of success that you would tell someone that just started out. Uh, first of all, listen to the client. Listen to the client and apply what they say. It doesn't matter what I want. It's what they want. This is all about them. And that's whether it's their listing or their purchase. And it doesn't matter what price range you're in. I started out selling $12,000 houses, 16000 in West U. Today, I'll sell houses for five. I'll sell houses for six million. I'll sell lots in River Oaks for six million. To me, if you take good care of the people, I've got one lady that's given me 10 buyers, and I attribute 50 sales to those 10 leads. It's golden. It, it really is. In other words, it, it's also sounding like the idea of whatever the relationship with one person, the relationship to nurture that, develop it. And as you said, to be a great listener is gigantic, of course. But to have that relationship, we just by helping people, we don't know where it can lead if we do the best of our abilities at all time. And you got to be knowledgeable, though. You're very knowledgeable about the area you serve. Talk about the knowledge, about the, the, the market knowledge that someone needs to have and what you uh, use to stay on top of things. Knowledge is control. You need to see all the listings. I have a client for a particular property on Thursdays is Tanglewood Memorial Day. I go and preview properties. Typically, when I go through them, it'll make me think of someone. And I get people to move that didn't know they wanted to move if I see something for them. I'll call them and say, it's time for you to move. There I go. saw something for you. That's right. And you have the opportunity to see all the things absolutely. available so that you can yep. share that. And But knowledge in the business is control. You've got to uh, treat people fairly always. You've got to be honest with them, and you have to keep it very simple. It's a simple business, and you can make it complicated and confuse people, but it does not have to be. No doubt about it. And also, people that are in the <laughs> Houston area, certainly a lot of people – are beyond hear the show after the fact after the broadcast and reach out to us but in the meantime the area again that you serve that post oak tanglewood the beauty is too you also from a marketing standpoint other than walking around and previewing you are also if they go to the randall shopping center they'll see and i see you every time i shop there you are in the shopping basket looking at me while i'm putting my groceries in there people call me from the grocery store and say this is i mean it's repeated a million times what are you doing in my basket? Uh, and then they're laughing. Uh, and then they go home and they'll call me because I'm always in the Tanglewood River. It's buzz. They'll see me in there. And so 
they think that they see me everywhere, and they really just see me in this small area that I specialize in. And I do specialize in If someone wants to go to Sugar Land or the Woodlands or somewhere, I refer them to a really good agent. Or I'll say to them, do you want to drive or read the map? Mm-hmm. So I'm just real honest with them that that's not my bailiwick. Because you have, you have a certain specialty. Exactly. Also, what do you tell people? And I don't know if you run into this when we're talking, again, the homes you serve are the, the homes that are million-dollar-plus typically, right, and sometimes five and beyond. Right. But let's tell people about in that market, are there, are there people that want to sell their homes themselves? Does that occur? There are. And what do you tell someone that, that wants to be uh, to sell a by owner this versus is a, a realtor? This is a major investment for you. And I don't think that you really want to practice on yourself. This is a difficult business at best when you have someone really managing the transaction and it's got lots of facets. For the amount of commission that I would charge you, the buyer that comes along, sees your for sale by owner, for example, they're going to say, oh, we're going to knock 6% off of that or 8% or 10 or whatever it is. And you're going to do the work and you're not getting any service from a realtor. It will behoove you to use a professional and you will end up with many more dollars than you're saving. And not only that, boy, the, the, the realtor has the knowledge, especially when you're, we're talking about someone that services an area and knows it inside and out. It's just it's just use a professional. There are just too many pitfalls, right, Weldon? Absolutely. And not only that, I say this all the time, I'll say it again, and that the realtor has to be not just knowledgeable about their area. They have to know what we're talking about, the paperwork, all the complexities. It's just not an easy thing. And you, what about negotiation? That's a big deal. Oh, Absolutely. Fortunately, most of my clients pay cash. On my listings, I got two recently in the neighborhood. I had clients for both of them. I sold them the first day for full price, all cash. There you go. Now, they could have sat there. I asked them, how many times do you want to make your bed and leave your house? Because I don't want you here when I show the house. Just very honest with them. And they like it. Apparently, they keep coming back. There's no doubt. And it's hard to put a price on the experience you have, Weldon, 46 years in the real estate profession. And not only that, right here in Houston, Texas, you know what you're doing and you know the marketplace. I've tried to give back over the years. I was a director of HAR for four years. I'm a certified residential specialist. I was one of the first members 25 years ago. I started the luxury division for Keller Williams nationally with 12 other folks. Now we have 2,400 members. When I began to decide that I was going to relocate my boutique within a big organization, I interviewed about six places, and uh, everybody made me a fabulous offer. I knew them all. I've known everybody that's in our part of town forever. And at the end of the day, I thought, I'm going to Keller Williams because they have the best training, especially for new people. I mean, it is the best, continuous. They have the best commission structure. We have profit sharing for the agents in the office. Can you tell I'm in love with the company? It's a fabulous place to work. It is. And and I I was just having a conversation just Mm -hmm. yesterday at lunch about what a realtor does when they think about, when they decide to be a realtor, that's one thing. But then when they make the decision to be with a particular broker, what Mm -hmm. are the things that are important to them and how do they do that? Because I think it is challenging and I think you're a great ambassador, not just for your business in real estate, but for Keller Williams Metropolitan and Keller Williams. Well, and tell people how they can reach you should they want to reach out. You can always get me on my cell number, my mobile at 713-806-3191. If for any reason I don't answer, leave a message and I will call you back shortly. Also, you can go on my website, weldonrigby.com. There's far more on the website about me than you ever would want to know. But anyway... <laughs> It's, it's a great website. I didn't do it. A company did it for me out of California. But we'll be checking that out. Yeah, check that out. WeldonRigby.com. Once again, the phone number, Weldon? 713-621-2555. You are listening to Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title. The show will continue. Stay with us. We're coming back with even more. legendary realtor around my area and Houston in general. Weldon Rigby. Weldon, welcome back to the show. 
Thank you, Bill, for having me. When you get a steak, how do you get it done? Well done. Well done. Yes, sir. <laughs> I had to ask. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> what and else? I remember. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, here he is again. And what else should we know well in with the last uh, three minutes? Well, I was very impressed listening to what Allie had to say because one of the first things I do when I go in a listing appointment to help the sellers is have them declutter personal pictures after you go, pieces that are not to scale for the room need to go to go down the road, rent storage. You may love this cluttered, over-furnished look. You have an abundance of wonderful things, but we need to see fewer of them. And it gives an impression of a much bigger house. People like it. But that's one of my big things with, with uh, listings and with sellers. And this is the most asked question. How long is it going to take you to sell this property? That's right. It could be a day, a week, a month, or a year. Or you may give me a maybe never price. Mm-mm. If you're going to give me a maybe never price, I need a 10-year listing because <laughs> we need to get some appreciation going there. But it's all about pricing and listening and people, and this is their lives, their biggest investment generally, whether they're buying or selling. And uh, if you do a great job for them, you will never want for business. Indeed. And I bet you see some things that are in incredible challenges. You can see a nice house. It may look nice with a curb appeal, manicured lawn, but you get inside and like you just said, there's a ton of clutter. And I know in your mind, you have to say, hey, what do we do to fix this now? Right? Well, if you get a hoarder, have a move out. Oh, that's right. Because <laughs> they have aisles through their house that you go through. Oh, no. Just like the TV show. Yeah, <laughs> that is scary. I had one and even her car was cluttered. I mean, her dog could walk from the back window to the windshield without changing levels. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So just declutter. Be honest. Price your property well. Have it in great shape. And hire a professional. Hire a professional. Location, location, location. And also, hey, if you're over there in the Post Oak San Felipe, you could be shopping. You'll see Walt, uh, Weldon in, in the shopping cart right there, right, Weldon? Randall's. Just come and see me anytime at Randall's. Anytime. <laughs> and also tell them your phone number, Weldon. 713 621 Two five 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 is my direct line, or my mobile is seven one three eight zero six thirty one ninety one. Very nice. Once again, another radio adventure. Great guest as always. Thank you, Weldon Rigby. So awesome to see you here on Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title. You know we'll be back next week, but people think the show is going to end. No, it's not, because you can always hear it at Stuart.com forward slash Houston. Stuart.com forward slash Houston. It never stops. It's twenty four seven right there. While this broadcast ends, we'll be back with more next week on Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title, your host, Bill Nampick. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And again, go to Stuart.com forward slash Houston. Until next week, we'll be back.